the testimony, the testimony, the testimony with Paula Brian, yeah, yeah, the diva for Christ, yeah, oh, why don't you, why don't you tune in every Tuesday at 9 Eastern Standard Time, you are listening to the testimony with host Paula Briar, a.k.a. Diva for Christ. And in case you don't know what that stands for, it's the finely inspired vessel appointed and anointed for a time such as this. Hey, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, you don't want to miss on Speaker. already know that because you always are here in support of this wonderful show. And as you know, we do nothing without prayer first. So Father God, in your name, we ask that you just have your way with this platform as you do every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lord, we ask that you just would hide me from the folk and have them to see you, Lord. It's all about you and what we do for you, and only the things we do for you will last, Lord. Father God, we ask all in this and plus so much more in the precious name above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Woo! You know we always bring you the best on Tuesdays. We bring you the best in in ministry, in the business, in 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 our uh, art. We just bring you the music. Oh man, I tell you, we bring you all the best on a Tuesday and just to bless the listeners. So we again thank you for just tuning in and not finding it robbery to not be with us and spend our uplifting and spirit-filled time with the testimony, this wonderful show. Tonight will be no different. We have a wonderful man of God, a motivator, and my brother, master of photography, y'all. We got Chad Pennington, who's going to be in the house. Is he in the house yet? Yes, I'm in the house. You in the house, my brother, my brother, my brother. It, man, it's been a minute trying to get you to be in the house. I've been begging and pleading. Come on, Lord, do your thing, work it out, and look, here we go, here we go. Cool. Bless, you. Cool. Bless you, bless <laughs> you. I'm so happy. It. I appreciate it. You, you, you it. definitely, definitely worth it, worth every bit of it. You oh are gosh. such a God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to come right out the back. We're going to ask you something really fast because I want the listeners to get to know who Chad Pennington is. How did it begin for you, Chad? How did all of what you do, and of course, we want to hear what you do. How did it begin for you? Um, Well, my photography journey basically started from graphic design. Um, With graphic design, I used to think of things like um, I used to do work for people, right? And let's say if a client paid me like $100 for a certain technique that they wanted in graphic design, maybe it had been lettering or something like that. So I would go to Barnes & Noble. And at the time, I thought it was ludicrous to pay $35 for a book. But I'm like, the client paid me $35 for this book. And um, I mean, the the client paid me $100 for the job. The book is going to cost me $35. I'm just learning one technique. And then the rest of the pages, they're just going to be pure profit. So that's how I thought about Mm. it. And I kind of, mm. you know, went on with a nice photography journey like that because after that one technique, I was able to do other things and get other jobs. I didn't have to pay for the $35 again. It was all in the book, right? <laughs> so it was just, it was pure profit for me. And uh, after that, I just matured it over to um, to photography because I saw like a gap. I saw when, a, when we hired like some photographers to come, I just saw certain things that we could have did to make it better. So um, I asked a few guys to, you know, put me on. And I get it from a standpoint now. Like some of the guys that I asked to um, put me on, sometimes they kind of shunned away a little bit. Like when I asked to like shoot at a wedding, like a wedding is totally different. You can't be like brand new, just kind of running gung ho, right? So at the time I didn't understand it. I totally understand it now. Um, but 
they came out and they helped me out at an event. I helped them at an event. And then I just kind of stayed loyal to um, the people that were around me, all the people that were better than me. I just kind of stayed loyal and I continued to ask questions. Like that was, that was part of my, my career, asking questions. Okay. Well, you know, question. I, I say it as a, a teacher, you got to ask questions. How are we going to know what to teach you if you're know. not asking questions? Tell me, hello, <laughs> no, no, no. You know, as, as teachers, we need you. We need you Absolutely. to ask those questions. So it's really Absolutely. important. But I really want to know, because you you are the first, well, the second photographer that I've had on the ship platform. And it's it's really intriguing because I get a little confused myself w- with the difference with the graphic design what makes a graphic designer a graphic designer and what makes a, you know, straight up photographer, I guess, a, a photographer, or is it, you know, what's the difference? Please explain. Great question. So in, in nature, when you open your eyes in the morning, you're already seeing design, no matter what it is, already seeing design, you know, that, that professional, he's just taking those designs and he's arranging it in a way to make you see it, you know, in a, in a more creative, colorful way. You know, um, mm. whether it's a cloud or something like that, whether it's a letter and you you you, you mix it up. For instance, my brother, um, he has a um, a, a entertainment company in um, in L.A. and Georgia, a few other places, but it's called Flipside Entertainment. The guy who did his logo, he turned two F's upside down, and at first it kind of reminded you of Fendi, but when you look at it, it was flip side. It was two F's flip, but inside the two F's, it was an S for side, and it was very unique. <laughs> that way you know um and so that's when you kind of taking graphics and you're just redesigning them in a different way you know it should be called graphic redesign uh, maybe we can coin that oh, phrase tonight exactly. and get an nft that's from it <laughs> yeah. that makes sense right that does yeah. take you and, just, yeah. and it could be, so this could actually be with with um pictures or um actual letters it, it what does it make a difference well if you take the lettering and you put it on like for instance because i did graphic design for so long a lot of times when I photograph, I'm always uh, photographing like editorial. I'm always leaving space for copy, right, the words. And so a lot of times you can, when you throw those words on it, it changed the photo a little bit. It changed the dynamic of how you see the photo, what it means, because now it's a story added to it, or it's a title for an entry. Some of that's added to it. Um, so mm. you can mix the two. Now, photography is something that should speak on its own. When you see the photo, you should immediately identify what it is. If you don't, you're staring a little long, which is which is kind of cool in and of itself as well. But um, with, with photos, it's all visual. And a lot of times, don't think you need the big fancy equipment. You can use straight your phone and things like that and still uh, still capture moments. That's what it's about. Wow. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. All right. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit more knowledgeable. No, I'm not. I don't know enough. I don't know enough. <laughs> I'm being honest. It's, oh, yeah. Uh, I it's easy once you got a passion for it. I promise you, I never thought that I would do it because um, at the time I wasn't good at math. And there are these scales, just like you would do music or something like that. There's these scales mm-hmm. you learn, which which what we call um, um, we call like different apertures, right? And so a guy said, well, you know, you can do it, but again, I never was good at math. And so the guy kept saying, well, you know, the apertures are 2.8, 3.5, 4.0. 5.6, 6.3, um, um, 8.0, you know, um, F11, F14, F6. And I was like, wait, wait, and wait, what? You got to learn math? And he's like, uh, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I'm going to tell you really what happened and who helped me out. Um, there's a song by Brooklyn's own Biggie Smalls, right? And mm-hmm. in the song, he's just talking about how humans, we breathe just like us. And and so in the in the melody, he says, picture me being scared of somebody that breathes the same air as me. When I heard that, it was saying, picture me not learning what another human learned. So no matter if I had to learn it two or three times, once I got it, you can't take it away from me now. And so that's what I had to do. I had to, you know, I had to get past my fear of like not good with numbers. And I had to make myself do something that I wanted to do. Um, and once I did that, um, it changed my life completely. Wow. Wow. That's, that's amazing. So, so math is connected in some kind of way. I was going to ask you what skills, if someone's listening and they want to be a photographer or graphic designer, what skills or what, what would they need to really know? And you said math. Is there anything else that they need to, um, do they need to have an eye for something? Or, you know, can you just, can people just stumble across it and actually end up being good at it? I mean, you know, what, what could one who's listening take out of like wanting to be in this, uh, in this actual field? 
I mean, I could think it's it's me. You you can do it if you want it. You just have to you have to find your entry point, right? Because like it's almost like in the scriptures, right? When it says um God to give you a way out, right? It never said the way. Like it wasn't hey walk walk to the left. That's it. It was a way out, right? So in this term, what you're asking, you have to find your own entry, you know. And mm-hmm. your entry could be like I did, right? I wasn't afraid to call somebody up. I would call somebody up and say um hey listen John Lewis um I, I see you. I go. I, as a matter of fact, I give you an example. I saw a magazine, a friend of mine said, hey, look at the new Ebony magazine on my girls in the magazine. So I looked at the magazine. Not only was his girl, like she was in the magazine, dressed really nice with the other people that were there, the whole layout, the whole layout was flawless. So immediately I looked in the gutter, which is right in the middle of the newspaper, which why they put it there, I don't know. But um, it's really small. It said this guy named Sergio Cahergi. Um, He's an Italian guy. His mother was a sculpture. His father was a, a painter. It's this whole big ordeal. But... I saw the number, went online, I called him. Hi, Sergio. My name is Chad. I'm a photographer here in Jersey. Um, I saw this layout you did for Ebony. I really loved it. Um, I want to ask you something. Nobody probably asked you, and I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, is it possible I can come on a shoot with you or anything, anything else like that? I'm not asking you for any money at all. I'm just asking to learn, because I just want to learn from people who are better than me. And then I got really quiet. And then he was like... Uh, you know what, let's meet at this place called the Aperture Foundation, right? It's a photography term, Aperture. And so we met there and we talked and he's like, dude, why do you want to, um, why do you want to do, you know, photography? I'm like, well, I want to learn from those that are better than me. And he said, okay, cool. He gave me an address. We went and it was like, it was a shoot that had enough, like, you know, theater things. You had like a real stylist there that was in the trailer. You had like bikes, you had like tall cherry pickers that go up on top of buildings and trees. Um, We're shooting in alleyways and, just all, yeah. all, all the fashion road, like all, all, all in New York. It was on cobblestone streets with a, with a whole entire crew. It was, it was amazing. I mean, it was amazing. And I was just like, oh my God, like this is it. <laughs> but that came from me simply just making a phone call to each and every photographer that I like and ask, could I talk? Some of them couldn't talk. Some of them would say, hey, yeah, I'm on a, I'm on a show right now. Send me an email. All right, cool. So it just wasn't meant for me to talk to him at that time. But the ones that picked up and I asked for like five minutes, they gave me 10, 20, 30. And it went from there. And that's God. And, you know, yes. just stepping out in faith. And, you know, that now faith that we talk about, um, yeah. you know, just, sometimes it's just not being in the right place. But just make taking that one step and then he takes two. So, you know, bless yeah. God. That, that is and just I did so it amazing. Times. I, I did it to multiple times, various photographers from New York to L.A. I just wanted the knowledge. If I like your work, I just wanted the knowledge. And I said, and I had the same speech every time. And, you know, the more I believed in the more, the more I believed in what I was saying, because, you know, after I kind of got one person to talk to me then two, again, I went through a few no's, but after that, it was almost like so easy to do it almost after that, you know, so it was like Mm. a confidence thing. And, um, yeah. Wow. Wow. I I know, you know, um, I I definitely don't consider myself an established graphic artist, but or a designer in any way, or even a photographer, but, you know, you find yourself uh, just taking on different things, platforms, when uh, you're kind of thrust into it. Um, Mm -hmm. And I found that it's therapeutic. How do you feel about what you do um, when it comes down to uh, photography? Um, Because I definitely find that it's therapeutic. I'll be on it, you know, uh, doing a a flyer for like, like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and just, you know, like feeling peaceful. You know what I'm saying? What What do you feel when it comes down to what you're doing? Where where do you? I'm gonna give give you a secret. You can't tell nobody. (laughs) (laughs) I'm gonna give you a secret. I'm gonna give you a secret. You can't tell nobody. I'm actually doing. Um, I'm actually. I'm doing some photography right now. I'm editing some photography as we speak. It's therapeutic. So I'm on the phone. It's therapeutic as I'm talking to you now. Wow! Well, wow! <laughs> well, you're a multitask. Don't even try it. Everybody that's can't right. do two things at one time. I'm one of them, Lord. But no, that's it. But it is. It, it really is. And I, I truly oh, understand what you're saying. It, it's soothing. So, um, the only part about graphic design that was frustrating for me was. Um, it was if I didn't know what direction I was going in, because if I didn't, I would be on there like eight hours too long, you know, and I didn't know that the less time you spend and the more, you know, dynamic you make it, you can make more money because even if nobody's calling you for a job right then and there, you can be using that time to market to get the next client in 
or two clients or however you market, right? Um, and so then I would take like a long time trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I kind of I kind of gave myself a certain technique that I used to like help me in graphic design, and um, yeah, that kind of forced me into um, forced me into graphic design more. Where I was doing like those campaigns with the bishop and everything else like that, and like all the campaigns he had, everything. I mean, we had T-shirts, socks book bags, everything. Um, I did everything. Um, but, you know, then I, I found out, uh, you know, kind of through the power of, hmm, I'll say you, it has to be a passion for you. It has to be almost an, uh, an obsession. I used to go into the grocery store because that's what all the graphic design is. That's the secret. All the graphic design is in the grocery store. It's nothing but labels, ads, design all around you. I used to collect yeah. circulars. All the design is in the grocery store. <laughs> and so if you can go to places like that where there's a lot of graphics, you, you'll, you'll never run out of ideas. Never. It's, it's, wow. it's all different. It's all different kind of textures on, on different textures, shiny textures, matte textures, silver textures. The graphic design is all around you on meat products, on, on, you know, bakery products, whatever you want is there. You'll never run out of ideas. Just depends. If you say somebody wants a, you know, a design for um, some, some dog food, go to the dog aisle. You're not stealing you're 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 borrowing inspiration now um but pablo pablo picasso said real artists steal <laughs> so but i knew the metaphor he meant because you're not going to replicate it the same way you know but right. you can kind of borrow inspiration and do like that and once i had a direction of where i was going it was easy for me to take off in la la land but before that i would spend like like i said eight hours too long than i had to but i would always wow. meet my deadline though yeah i mean that's important right you know yeah. you know in time um, but again, you know, even with music, you, you do spend time into what you're doing. And sometimes I, I kind of feel like, you know, you get this block where you just have to push away. Um, do yeah. you get that same kind of feel when you when you're in photography in the in, in the photography world? Like, do you feel sometimes you just got to walk away from something and then just come back and see, you know, if something changes or if you could do something different? All the time. Um, I had this app called um, Evo, which means kind of evolved, and it was just talking about like the the different types of um, characteristics that you know a person displays. And so mine was a more on the creative side. So it said for people like me, it would be more interesting if I had a meeting walking around the block, or if you wanted to like take a lunch break, like get up in a tree and eat your lunch, something like that, like something that a creative would find creative. And I thought about it. And I used to have like, okay, I got to talk to this client at four o'clock and I would just walk around the block. But I found that way more interesting than sitting at the computer or things like that. So um, when I get those blocks now, it's just, you know, I, I literally may just stop, you know, what I'm doing and go to something else or just kind of literally get up and take a walk. Like it's, it's literally as simple as that sometimes. Mm. Okay. And I know you're heavily around music. Um, it does music influence what you do in any way? Do you, are oh you my God. That Oh my God! Let me. Okay, so let me tell you something. I'm on, I'm on one of my uh, apps right now, Title, and I have a, I have a playlist called Super Duper, right? And let's see, on this playlist, and um, this, and I put it on repeat. This playlist has 118 tracks, so that tells you right wow. there that's the influence. Yeah. Over seven hours worth of music on there. Um, yeah, and that's just one of the playlists, but that's that's my most heaviest so far. But um, that's all I do. I gotta, I gotta have some kind of music playing to uh, put me in a certain mood. Um, the work is it a particular genre or no it's just you know different styles it that, that different kind of styles different styles because you know the more i begin to travel you start to hear sounds in different ways and um different tones and different notes um and you saw some things were universal and everything else is just the content of what the person is saying but some things were universal some things were not um but in and in, in once, once i did that it's like different I mean, I can go from American to hip hop to Afrobeat to Brazilian music to Asian music. Um, right. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just a, it's a lot that you can really touch on when it comes to music, but um, just depends. Sometimes it's um it may be the Dalai Lama where he's doing a prayer, and the prayer is just you mm. know he simply he just you know he's just telling you he's giving you great affirmations while this music is playing, and it's really it's really calm, it's real calm, and I, and, I, and I love it. Sometimes I may I may start I may start my um you know before I start editing I may start that up, and that, that may be the appetizer. To my workflow. Wow, and you know that's so amazing because as a as an artist, as a singer, or whatever you or a songwriter, even you know that that is that really uh, helps. Like I write lyrics, but I write them to music, so the music yeah. is like 
leads me into what I need to be writing about. You know, so I, I'm I'm glad to hear that, you know, music is an influence on what you're doing. And it kind of takes you to different directions as to, you know, your creativity. It means a yeah, lot. And, that, and that, you know, I mean, every that's not everybody's thing, I'm sure. But, you know, yeah. it's nice to know that there are people, because I know I deal with a lot of special education children. And a lot yeah. of their learning comes heavily through music, the arts, the drawing. You know what I'm saying? It comes heavily through that. And I found that as a as a learner, that helped me a lot. You know what I'm saying? In getting to different levels in my education, even. You know, so oh, that man. you know, it's really good. yeah, man. That 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 meant everything had a song to it. <laughs> everything yeah. had a song. You know, yeah. If I did a yeah. practice, or that was in school. <laughs> yeah. It was like it, new song. It, it helped. It actually helped. <laughs> yeah. It yes, helped. it does. Yes, it does. You remember certain songs. You remember certain notes, and you know. So now I didn't sing songs. But the way I used to remember numbers and things like that was through the sound, right? So let's say your number was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Maybe I would say something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so in my head, yeah. if I forgot the number, I'm like, what was her number? And I'm like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I remember like little notes like that, and that would help me to remember. Because a lot of times, you know, if I had to remember certain things, I didn't make no melody up for it, but I just made like some kind of sound that I can remember it in my head. Like if I heard it real funny, like, you know, and so, and, and I kind of learned that from traveling because it was certain ways people would speak and I'll say certain things and I wouldn't know like um, what to say, but I would have to hear it in a certain way. So for instance, when I um, went to um, Lagos, Nigeria, they would say, um, they would say something like, if you want to say, okay, I'll give you an example. They have this word, the word is called um, Oremi. Depending on how you say it, it's a different tone. Spelled the exact same way, right? So if I say ore me, that means like I'm tired. If I say ore me, that means that um, that's my friend. Like you, you're my friend. So it's it's mm. a different tone. So when I when I learned, I'm like, oh, it had a it had a cool tone. Or if if somebody kept badgering me about buying something, I would say oti fario, right? Which means like it's enough. It's finished. It's enough. And then when I did it and it worked, I said, yo, this thing works. And I'm like, wait, the, the, the language works. But then that taught me. You give yourself another cadence to remember. And so it helped me, you know, for a long time. Wow. And learn languages. <laughs> That's just <been> amazing. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you can everywhere, like the arts, the music, like, and now languages. I mean, you're the whole package right there. But, <laughs> hey, listen, to this. you got to reach out to this guy. We're going to get his number and his information. <laughs> Because you're getting a little bit of everything when it comes down to my boy Chad. <laughs> Listen, I'm telling you, it's amazing. I'm serious. But you know what? People don't understand. It's even down to singing, the same thing, going back to that. You know, you got people like Donnie McCurk and, and, and other artists that go into the realm of different languages and stuff like that. It just, it's just about going to a whole nother level in yeah. what you do and enjoying it. You know what I'm saying? And really enjoying it. That that's amazing. Like, wow. And on a on a photography level, I've never heard it quite like this. So I really, really, truly appreciate you for all that you do. Um, and you've been oh, doing. You. And you work with so many people. Um, can you tell the listeners like some people that they may be n- noted of knowing and you know and what stuff you've done with these people or for these um, people and for. Okay. Yeah, for- I can give some. Um, some of some I can't really say because you have NDAs. Um, okay. that you signed. Um, so some of my can't, um, but, oh God, like recently, um, me and a friend just shot, um, it was a, a basketball player, Tony Snell, um, his, his wedding in Miami, um, not too long ago, uh, plays for the NBA. Um, I can't even think of my head right now. Um, a lot of people, but, um, just various celebrities have did Bishop quite a few times. Uh, oh God, they're going to come to me. Um, What's her name? Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. I oh. shot her not so long ago. Um, that was yep. that was really good because we got into a conversation about um, books. And so uh, I said, I'm a big audio book guy. You know, and she says, ah, you're cheating. And I'm like, what? I'm like, I can get the information. And she's just like, yeah. She's like, yeah, but it's something about like taking a highlighter, highlighted, you know, dog ear in the page and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I went online, they were saying like she has her own like book club. And it's, it's usually held at this store like every like once a month on certain Tuesdays. It would just so happen that next Tuesday was there. So I followed her there. And then when I came and she saw me, she's like, oh, hey, like that. And she said, um, she asked again about the, 
the audio book thing in front of everybody else. But it was really cool, like, to go visit her and do things like that. Um, but I found out when you shoot with celebrities, it's, um, they're just people like you. They just got a different job. <laughs> and, it, and they maybe have different resources, but it's just, it's just a job, you know? Right. Well, you yeah. know, everybody, look, and I hear you keep saying Bishop, so you know I'm going to call you out. Bishop who? Who might you be talking about? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Bishop has a guy walking. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yes, what's up? What's up, Hes? You know, <laughs> I just wanted to get a, <laughs> give him a shout out. That was a good way to give him a shout out. Yeah, that was a beautiful, wonderful man, always uh, about his people and supporting his people and I know he's he's definitely behind you and always has been uh at you know at everybody that 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 just knows has for who he is. But definitely I am so um I'm excited um like I said to bring this show to the platform of listeners. A lot of people want to know more about photography. Um what would your suggestion be to them? Um we know that sometimes things just come natural but is there anything that you would say to the listeners that are interested um, in regards to just to get started? Um, and, and like, can you point them in directions of things, you know, like that they can uh, kind of check out just to get more grounded in things that they want to do in photography or, or graphic so design? A lot of pe- yeah. So a lot of people, when they, when they buy like, you know, um, certain pieces of software or they buy gear, um, I'm going to say something and I don't mean any disrespect by it. Right. But I got to say it. Right. Here's what I would say. Read the manual. <laughs> that's, mm. that's it. Mm. Just, mm. Read the manual. Um, a lot of times you miss a lot in the manual. Now, you can go on, you know, YouTube, and there's some great resources there and things like that and find some experts. Um, but, a lot of, but a lot of times it's something about the information is right there in the manual. It'll tell you how to do it. Now, if you go through the manual a few times and you don't get it, then, you know, I would seek out some other sources. But a lot of times people say, hey, Chad, I got this certain camera like yours. How do you do so and so? And I'm like, dude, just read the manual. I'm like, it's just, it, it's really, it's really as simple as reading the manual a lot of times. Now I understand it's not, it's not as colorful and things like that as, as, as going online, but you tailor all of it to your particular learning. So again, like I said before, I think anything you get into, it has to be a passion. If it's not a passion, yeah. then it's just a hobby, right? And so I, you have to ask yourself where you are in life to do your hobby. You know, um, is it, are you, are you at a place where you, you kind of, you, you kind of have enough funds and, and your life is such where you're like, you know what, I can afford to do a hobby and that's cool. You know, are you at a place like, you know what, I just need a little bit of more, you know what I'm saying? So I need to add this other, this other thing there, you know what I'm saying? But whatever it is, I think it should be a passion. So if you're going to get into graphic design, you know, there's a lot of study materials, you can do it. But again, you have to ask yourself because some, I didn't know what kind of graphic design you want to be. I was sending them a lot of um, a lot of urban. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I was sending them a lot of graphic design to different companies. These are a lot of companies that did stuff for like a lot of the big brands. And one guy hit me back and he said, mm, mm, "Your stuff is more, it's more urban." <laughs> and so I tell you back like because we were in the chat box. I was like, "What does that mean?" And he said, "Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different out of out of our out of our league." But I I know what he was saying. It was, it was black. I, I I know what he was saying. And it, and it was cool because. <laughs> <laughs> Later on, you understood about, you know, um, you know, brand awareness and, and where you are, you know, your, your target audience, you know, is what I'm trying to say. Um, you learned about that later on. And so from there, I kind of, you know, I just kind of, but it, it didn't shun me. I, I still kept moving. So you had to find out, like, where does your graphic design fit? I know you like this particular hat, but you look better in this particular hat, right? And so it's but- like, where does your graphic design fit? And so, again, it doesn't mean you can't learn some of them other genres to get the hat you want. It's just now just take what you what you're good in and run it there. Some people are good in logos. I love great logo makers. Um, some people are great in logos. Some people are great in graphic design. But every designer is not should be used for everything, right? Just because somebody can do a great logo, don't mean they can do a good design, and then vice versa. You you gotta make sure they can do that medium very well. You gotta make sure it's a consistent look when the portfolio goes down. Everything has to be consistent. There's no there's no excuses when it comes to it. And I'm talking, I'm, talking, I'm talking from the other side of the table of a person that wants to get into it. Your portfolio has to be top notch, especially in this day and age where um, technology is rampant. Now that's the future. So now there's no excuses why you, your photo shouldn't look like what you're gunning for. When, when I say gunning for, if you're going for, um, if you want to work at Nike, study the Nike ads and Nike brands and things like that, bring to the table something that they're doing. You know, um, try, try, try to find a way around the budget. 
You know what I'm saying? Make a mm-hmm. smaller version. You know what I'm saying? Call on, call on people, give them your story, have them believe in you. You know, so there, there is ways to do it. It's just ask yourself, are you willing to go those ways? Hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's 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 real information right there. I so appreciate um you just coming on and sharing. Um, and I don't know if I asked, but if 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 you were gonna have someone who's newly started or someone kind of familiar, I won't even say new new. Um, uh, is there a particular uh graphic design program that they can they can uh focus on, you know, or, or that's kind of simple, not too technical, you know, something like that that they can uh. Uh, to decide to use that could help them get to that level? Well, again, depending on your learning, right, I would say, hey, go online, get this simple one at X, Y, and Z. What I learned is sometimes if you want to get pro results, you have to use what the pros use. There's no way around it. Now, when it comes to certain things like light and composition and certain things like that, we get that because that stuff is already in nature. But when it comes to actual equipment and things like that, that's for the future. Yeah. Yeah. You got to use what the pros use. So one of the um, standard programs people use is Adobe Photoshop when they want to retouch images and things like that with photography. Or you have mm. other, you know, competitors like Lightroom or Capture One, things like that. But if you're going to do any kind of graphic design, I would start with um, Adobe Photoshop. Now you can use what they call Adobe Illustrator um, to get things, but it's a whole Adobe suite. I think they have it online. It's like a few different um, apps. And offer like between ten and twenty dollars a month, right? Just depending on. I, I would just do a free trial, start there, and um, and, and, and see how you like it. If you don't like it, move on to something else. Cool, cool, and I that's good. Say, don't, don't, yeah, yeah, I've heard about that 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 Adobe. So yeah, that's good to know because a lot of people do talk about it. But um, is it? Would you find that it's easy? Of uh, you know, easy, friendly, or how do you say it? Friendly, you know, where you can just handle it, or is it kind of kind of difficult no no, no. I, but again difficult is relevant to how you learn right again when they told me like this is the software that you need to make these um flyers and to make these business cards i'm like this is the one they say yeah this is the one you need and i started looking i said well let me go to the barnes and nobles barnes and Noble. listen barnes and noble listen they needed i needed my own space up in there because um i literally lived up in there i used to um at the time when i was um i was dating this girl I was, um, we had a date and she called me like, Hey, where you at? I'm about a movie theater. And I'm like, I'm in, uh, I'm in Barnes and Noble, but I'm close. Give me, just give, give me a second. She called like 30 minutes later. Where are you? I'm about to get the line for the ticket. Yeah. Um, just give me one second. I, I haven't even purchased my book yet. I was getting lost in the books in there. And so I would go in there and find a beginner's book to, you know, Photoshop. But now again, you got, you got, um, you got YouTube. In places like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I, will, I will lock on to an expert that I love, their teaching style, and that's conducive enough for me. And then I would set time, you know, um, around how I, you know, how I, how I do my daily rituals. And then I would go from there to learn. And I would learn all I can. But again, if it's not a passion for you, don't even do it. Don't do it because you can. Do it because it's a passion and you're going to really help somebody. Right. Because right. when you put and the two together, it, 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 it'll, it, I think it'll manifest more, right? Because if you have like, you know, you're like, well, this will help somebody, but I don't really got a passion for it like that. Then you kind of just, you kind of like exerting your, your time into a hobby then. But if you say, hey, I'm super passionate about this and I think it will help somebody, you'll, it's almost like you'll do double time. And like I say, everything will manifest quicker. Hmm. That's, that's dope. That's dope. I really am appreciating this, really. Um, what, um, what, well, of course, you're doing stuff. You're always doing so many different things. Um, I, I definitely don't want to leave the platform without you giving your information um, as to how people can reach out to you. Uh, can you give uh, the listeners um, that information right now so that they can get reach out? <laughs> I'm going to make this simple, right? You can simply go to my Instagram, and the Instagram will walk you to the other places like the website and all the other places. Um, but you can go to my Instagram, which is at so be it art photography. Now, I'm going to break it down because when most people see it, they say so be it art. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you're just not wrong, right? And so, <laughs> it's so be it art. It's S O B I T A R T photography. S O B I T A R T photography. Now, as my brother say in Nigeria, photography. And so it, 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 it kind of helps you out when you show it as well. So it's so be it art photography. Um, and yeah, on, on Instagram. And Instagram will take you to every other place. And you can see some of my current stuff. 
Um, I have something new in there where I'm kind of adding audio to the to visuals now. Um, just kind of telling my side of the story of like a lot of my photos. People always ask questions about like that. So now I'm kind of answering those questions, giving you a little bit of behind the scenes of what's going on in a lot of these photos now. So that's really cool to look at. Um, I'm excited to actually do more, and I have more coming up. Um, yeah, so go, go to my Instagram and check that out. And I, and I was going to ask you, what's in the future for Chad? What what are you doing? What's coming up? Currently, I'm trying to um, I'm planning, trying, to, trying to plan a tour. Um, it's, it's difficult now because the world is like, you know, in, you know, one foot in the door, one foot out the door right now. Um, <laughs> and so um, I even saw, uh, um, I, I saw one of the, uh, I think Lady Gaga, she's doing a, um, a concert in Las Vegas it's called Back in the House, but it's spelled H-A-U-S, like the house of couture. Something like that. So that, that's very unique. But um, she says, she's like back in the house. So even they're already recognizing like it's a chance we may go back in, you know, because people are still dying at a, at a, at what I call an alarming rate. You know what I'm saying? Um, close to 2000 a day. That's, that's a, another story, but you know, um, that's still happening. But um, when I look at it, you know, when I look at the, um, the whole thing, um, it's just about putting that time and that work and that effort and, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. So like, again, go to my page, look at the um, stuff that's there. Yeah. Hope you like it. <laughs> and we will, I know they will. Um, I just, again, bless you just for coming. Woo! I'm so excited because I was hunting you down, trying to get you. I was like, got to get him on my show. So I just thank you so much just for blessing the listeners. Listeners, you've truly been blessed. You got the information for this wonderful, wonderful, wonderful photographer, uh, Chad. Thank you so much just for blessing the listeners. But, you know, we we at... Uh, at the testimony, we, we speak on terms of uh, community and community building. And um, I know you play, you into that. You are about your neighborhood. You're about your, your community. Um, and, and what advice would you give to, to those that are listening that have businesses? Because you, you are in business. You, you've been doing wonderful business. Um, what, what, like, if you were to give them advice, what would be the advice in regards to just doing business and, and ministry? Um, um, you know, to the listeners that are listening, because sometimes it's hard to bridge that gap. It really is between ministry and, and, and business business, you know what I'm saying? So, so what, what suggestion would you give to them? Well, you have to ask yourself, like, what is ministry, right? If ministry is about servitude, if ministry is about serving the people, you can serve the people in all different ways. You can't serve the people from the altar because if I need bread and I really need like, uh, the resource, give me bread. You can say, I'm gonna go pray about it. My stomach is rumbling. I need food mm-hmm. now. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm out in the community, and sometimes not handing out bread, sometimes it's giving that advice, sometimes it's taking the knowledge of that you have that um of the experiences that you had in the world and it's giving back to others. Now, I've you know, I've I've toying with the idea and people have asked me about um doing like a um kind of like a, a consultation thing because I give out so much advice to so many different people. Um, um and a friend of mine back actually built a website for me. Um that, that's already up. So we we're toying with the idea to actually put that up, but um, the thing about it is you, you have to be relentless and things like be on time and things like that, but whatever it is, you gotta be passionate for it. You gotta be passionate for it. And the, and the thing a lot of people are talking about, some people knew, some people didn't know, but you gotta have a team. Team makes the world go round. I love it when you have an artist, musician to say, oh my God, thank y'all for this um, award, but I got to give a shout to Barry so-and-so. He was the one on the percussion. I got to give a shout to yeah. so-and-so on, on the so-and-so. If we didn't have this person right here, this wouldn't have been so-and-so. They're telling you a real story. They're telling okay. you, if I didn't have these people around me at this particular time, this sound that you guys are praising me for, yeah. this um, piece of art that you're praising me for, it wouldn't have been the same. So I have to thank my team. Now, as a team member, you have to know, you have to get on where you can and get off where you have to, right? I heard Bishop Mose say that one time. He said you have to get on um, where you can and get off where you have to. Bishop Mose was a you know, pastor that passed away that was really, um, that was really um, important to me and my family, you know what I'm saying? And he kind of gave out wisdom all the time. And, and so when you think about it from those terms is you're in the background. You have to look at, wait a minute, I may not be getting paid money or monetary the way I'm, I'm supposed to, but... They got me around a whole bunch of resources and people that I have access to. I never have access to. I could literally reach out to, you know, this celebrity or, or, or this resource and this resource. I can really call somebody from this magazine. And so when you're around those positions, that's where your money is already. You just got to keep your head low, do what you got to do, 
and you know what I'm saying, until it's your time to be pulled out. Because a lot of times people would jump out too early and say, oh, I can do what they do. I, I got all these techniques. I'm good. And you get out there, you don't have the resources. You don't have a sad wife fair. You can't talk to nobody, and it's a whole different ballgame. Now you either got to do one or two things. You got to go out on your own and just chuck it and say, I lost. Or you got to do what my mother said. You got to eat and come back, you know, as she said, with your tail between your legs, like, hey, I messed up. That's when you're kind of putting down your pride and ego. That's the last thing we're talking about. When when um, a coming up entrepreneur, your pride and your ego, you forget about it. There's no room into anything else. When it comes to that business, that emotion is out the door. It's out the door. It's, it's, it's no room in for, the, for, the, for the business. Because that particular business, if it's a baby, right? That baby needs a certain amount of money, infamil, whatever you do to make the baby grow. So the same thing, when you bring an emotion to it, that business doesn't care that, you know, you, you just had an argument with your girlfriend. That business doesn't care that you had an argument over this and that. It doesn't care. That business has to be tended to. Mm. That's all that has to happen. And so, But that only comes from really dropping your pride and ego. And if you don't believe me, look at your musicians, look at your actors and actresses. They still have to go to work on set with somebody they may not care for. And they do a great job that nobody can tell something else is going on. That's a true professional. That's how That's we put it. it. That's it. And, and, and in business, because <laughs> there's jobs that yeah. folks go and and they ain't really happy, but they there, Absolutely. you know, and they're putting their best work forward. And that and that's really what it's about, because all you have is you and, and what you do and your performance. And, yeah. you know, once you throw it on that, <laughs> the party's over. <laughs> you party's know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta, you gotta keep it right. You gotta keep it right. You know, you know, a, again, a, a, again, I've, I've, I've had situations where I did a lot of things wrong. I still don't do everything right. But you have to have, you have, to have enough bridges that you built. So if some of the lower bridges mess up, you still got other bridges, bridges you can jump onto. You, got, you still yeah. got people there that, that, that are coming to bat for you. You still got people there yeah. that are saying, dude, you messed up. Now, as your friend, I'm going to tell you you messed up. But I gave you enough of you messed up. Now I'm going to show you how to get back on track so that way we yeah. don't get back there. You, you got to yeah. have those people around you there. You know what I'm saying? And um, that's really what it is, right? So one of my favorite scriptures is iron sharp of iron. So, 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 the, uh, so, so a man sharp is the countenance of another or the wits of another, depending which context you read, right? And so the deal is it's, um, it's almost like what you, what, you, what you hang around is what you become. You may have had like a singer or a rapper or maybe a, a drummer that probably wasn't as good, right? But then when he got around other drummers, other percussionists, other singers, other rappers, he was like, wait, yeah. you know, he's usually not that good or she's usually not that good, but, you know, it's something about, like, the way they played tonight was good. Yeah, well, they've been hanging around. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, they talk about hanging around greatness and things like that. So you have to constantly hang around that mind state. People that are talking about business, things like that. People that don't find it boring. I used to find it boring because I wasn't in a head state. Um, this lady named Susan Strippen, she's a photographer um, out in New York, and she said, oh, my God, I love talking about business. I love talking about business. Oh, my God, it's just... It's, it's, it's one of the best things. And I kept saying, yuck. But then when you really get into the, to the um, strategies of business and, and the creativity of business um, and, and all the different ways to kind of um, bring in income for your family and things like that, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And you, you have to be in love with it like that. You got you to gotta really mean the passion that you talk about behind it, you know? Um, I, think, yeah. I think that's what really um, makes the entrepreneur who they are, you know? Not, not just saying, hey, I have a website, um, you know, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm ready. It's like a lot of that BTS, that behind-the-scenes passion, that's going to really come out, you know, because when you do behind-the-scenes, you're in the dark. That darkness could only stay in dark for so long before it comes out. But you just got to know when it should turn to um, come out. That's a word. That's a word right there. Yes. Well, you know, the testimony we always um, uh, end, um, and I, again, I just want to thank you just for being uh uh, all that you have been to the industry and in photography and graphic design and all that you do. I know there's just so much more that God is, is ready to just move you into. And I just thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to actually, you know, end up on this show. I, I mean it. It means a lot. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I don't look at this as, you know, just a, you know, you know, Pete, you know, I got you, Pete. Mm -hmm. I know you're mm -hmm. busy and I really so, so appreciate your candidness because um, yeah. you're detailed in what you spoke about. And I know a lot of the listeners that are interested and maybe even those that may not have been interested, but just got sparked just because of what you said yeah. um, tonight. 
um, I just really, again, appreciate you and I appreciate the God in you just for being on this platform. Um, and, you know, we, we end in prayer. So I would, of course, ask you, my brother, to take us to the throne as we leave this platform. Okay, cool. Um, Paula, before I do that, I just want to say thank you, right, for, um, for bringing me on this platform, right? Um, because even if you had one follower and one listener, um, I still think it's great that somebody's thought enough about you to ask you to be on their platform. That in and of itself is amazing to me. You know, you told me about all the listeners in different countries and how many you had, and that's impressive. But what's impressive to me is the fact that you asked me to be on your platform. I appreciate you for that. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God, thank you tonight. Thank you for what we experienced. Um, let it resonate with somebody, some entrepreneur, um, somebody that was thinking of how to get a business. Um, either way, God bless the listener because this show is with pure intent to help. And that's what it's about. It's about your community. It's about your word. It's about our efforts. It's about our efforts in putting your word forward. God, we appreciate you as always. Forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for the things that we learn, um, that we know. That, forgive us for the things that we do in omission and commission, the things we know and the things we don't know. I appreciate you, God, from now for, to, to forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for blessing us. Uh, listeners, you've been blessed. You know, my boy, Dad, I'm telling you, Chad Pennington uh, is in the house. And he's truly, truly a man of God. And, and we just love you just for for again, being on this platform. And just know this is an open door policy. You know, you're yeah. welcome to come back anytime you have anything that you'd like to me to push for you and, and just kind of uh, allow the listeners to know what you're doing next. Um, please I would love it. let me know and they, they will know. Um, and again, um, I just want to thank everybody who comes back every Tuesday and, and just spending this wonderful time of uplifting and spirit filled, you know, uh, of doing the testimony. It's been a wonderful, wonderful uh, platform. Um, I just thank God for allowing me to be the vessel that he uses to bring wonderful people like this man right here to the listeners so that they can get knowledge um, on, on what they want to do and how to do it. Um, it's so important that we teach one another and community building is everything. And that's what my platform leans on. Yeah. We have to help one another. It's about helping God's people to take them to a next level. And I just thank you, Chad, for being a part of that. Thank you, Positive Power 21, for having me power. on. Yeah, yes. And Jerry Positive Royce power. in the back there doing my tech work. The man that makes it happen all the time. Thank you Jerry, so much. Just we appreciate you, Jerry. You're an unsung hero. <laughs> You're an unsung yes. hero. People don't talk about the sound guys. You're an unsung hero, That's Jerry. It. That's it. That's it. Yeah. And, and and I just want to thank everybody just for being uh, uh again here, listening to another episode of the testimony. I love you. God bless you. Be safe and go with God. I love you, Chad. Yeah. Love you too. <laughs> God bless. Yeah. The testimony with Paula Brian, yeah, the diva for Christ, yeah. Oh, why don't you, why don't you tune in every Tuesday at 9 Eastern Standard Time? You are listening to The Testimony with host Paula Brian, a.k.a. For Christ. And in case you don't know what that stands for, it's the finely inspired vessel appointed and anointed for a time such as this. Hey, every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, you don't want to miss on Speaker.com. Come on now, come on now. You're listening to Jerry Worsley, Worldwide Podcast.